Hi everybody, this is Roxy, your Firewife Lawyer Mom, and today we're gonna talk fifth grade curriculum, so stay tuned. Life was great till you added colors. Like the moon needs the sun. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on to this video. I'm so excited to share with you what I have for my fifth grader for the 2022-2023 school year. Make sure that if you like these videos, if they bless you, that you hit the subscribe button and you that you like and comment on my video. It definitely helps out my channel and I really appreciate all of the love here on YouTube. And I started my homeschool journey. This is going to be our third year homeschooling. We started three years ago thinking it was a crazy decision and didn't realize like what an amazing blessing homeschooling was going to be. We absolutely love it now that it is our third year. We're kind of getting into our groove and we really are just enjoying our time together and enjoying all of the learning and the experiences that we're having with with our kids as a family. So we're really, really excited for this upcoming school year. And if you guys are still kind of in that search for curriculum, you want to nail down things, you still um, are shopping for curriculum, I'm hoping that this video will give you a lot of ideas of different fifth grade curriculum. I know that I myself love watching curriculum videos. If it wasn't for curriculum videos on YouTube, I don't know how I myself would be able to get the process going. It really helps me to be able to see flip throughs so that I don't have to purchase things. So these videos have been just a blessing for me and I wanna kind of pay that forward. So what my ideas were in fifth grade curriculum this year is all about my, my kind of theme for everything this year has been fifth grade equals independence. We really wanted our fifth grader this year to be able to learn independently as much as she could. And so I tried to gear our curriculum that way so that we can kind of be a little bit more hands off because we feel that we spent the first two years of our homeschool journey really trying to guide her and give her those tools that she needed to be able to work on her own and to be able to teach herself. So as the year progressed last year towards the end, I was really starting to kind of let go of the umbilical cord, if you will, and giving her the opportunity to really show me that she could be able to take the material learn the lessons on her own with obviously of course my supervision my grading my kind of keeping on top of things but it was important for me to really be able to give her that independence because she's going to be entering middle school next year and this is her last year of elementary school so middle school i you know from what i've seen in other people that have shared with me you know they really like their middle schoolers to kind of be in that high school preparation mode that mode where you know it's all about learning on your own and for me just in I went through seven years of college and I know that once you get into college it's kind of like there's really no hand holding you go you listen to the lecture but you pretty much are on your own to figure out you know breaking down the material getting ready for the exam things like that and so these are the kinds of skills that I really want my kids to learn because in the future, when they wanna be able to teach themselves something, when they wanna be able to learn a new craft, a new skill, even when they go into the job market, you really want them to be able to be self learners, that they're somebody that can kind of be, have a decreased learning curve when they enter into the workforce and whatever company or wherever they work, if they start their own business, you want them to be able to just be go-getters for that information that they need to succeed. That's kind of the mindset that we have when we uh, decided to choose the curriculum. So as I turn over the camera and show you what our fifth grade curriculum is going to be, I wanted you guys to have that in mind, that this is curriculum that is pretty much really open and go, really kind of hands off and more kind of focused on her really taking the initiative to learn to grow with the curriculum. I hope you guys enjoy what I'm gonna be showing you. One more thing, just to kind of give you an idea of how I break up their curriculum. So we have logic, we have the core, which is reading, writing, and math. And this year, what I will be kind of teaching her would be religion, history, and I'll kind of be going over a little bit of language arts with her. Uh, she also will be reading once a month. She will have an assigned reading book where she will be creating a lap book in order to kind of represent what she's learned in the book that she's read. So she's gonna have one book every single month along with her independent reading. So this is just 
reading that she's going to be doing as an assignment and the rest is going to be other kinds of reading, you know, chapter books that she likes and she's interested in both fiction and nonfiction. So that's what the overview of her fifth grade year is going to be, but let me get to the nitty gritty and get to the curriculum. Also, if you guys have any questions, if you want me to do a flip through of any of the specific curriculums, please make sure to leave it in the comments below. I really want to be a good resource for you guys because I know that a lot of mamas out there were good resources for me. So please don't forget to do that. And without further ado, let's dive in. All right, everybody, so let's start. The first thing I wanna start with is I decided to get my fifth grader this year a weekly planner. So before, what we were using is I would kind of give her a little checklist, and with the checklist, she would just write down her assignments and then check them off as she went. So this year, I kind of decided to splurge a little bit and get her an actual planner. This is all part of the independence independent learning that she is able to go ahead and write in her assignments and then check them off as she goes. So it's just a basic planner from Target, nothing fancy. I really don't feel like for kids this young, you should spend that much money on a planner, to be honest with you. So this one is just fine and we are going to be using it a lot to just not only for her, she's a dancer, so she's gonna put her dance schedule and her assignments here so that she could be able to start that process of independently time managing. I give her assignments every single you know day. I give her the assignments for the day and it's up to her what order she wants to complete them, okay? So that's, I leave it up to her as long as it's done at the end of the day. So that's the first thing that I got for her. All right, so the way that she's gonna start her day is she's going to do this math skill of the day weekly journal now this is something i printed off of teachers pay teachers i will link it in the description box below so that you guys can be able to see it as well so basically and i'm just covering it here because my daughter's name's on it um so basically what it is is it's just one skill that she does every single day and you know they're coming these little papers that you cut out and then i paste it onto the notebook and so she's got all this area to be able to do her scratch work and then come up with the answers. And so I like this because it's just a little way for her to be able to warm up her brain before she starts like the meat of her curriculum. So the next thing I'm going to be using for fifth grade is with regards to logic. Now, logic has been something that I really feel is important, that logic and critical thinking is really, really important for kids to have as early as you can start it, okay? And we started doing logic and critical thinking from the beginning, from when that we started homeschooling. And we really feel that it has helped them a lot in just being able to take information, process it, and really have a little bit of higher level thinking in what they are doing or what they are reading. And so I found these two great resources for critical thinking. The first one is the Skill Sharpener's Critical Thinking. I love this curriculum because it doesn't have very long lessons. They are very colorful, uh, but it gives them an opportunity to solve different problems, to you know, kind of think about different things about their community, about their world, and it helps them to just use that critical thinking mind that critical thinking skill to be able to solve and to answer these different questions. And so she only does about two pages per week of this. It is not a very long curriculum, so she should be able to finish it by the end of the year. Okay, now I apologize a little bit about the lighting today. The problem is, is that we just got a rainstorm that's coming in and so it's getting a little cloudy. So I apologize if you've gotten, if you see some shadows in the curriculum. The next thing I'm using for logic is the reading detective. Okay. And this is using higher order thinking to improve reading comprehension. So what I love about this is that number one, my daughter loves all things mystery and detective and solving mysteries and all that. So this is kind of really up her alley. But what I love about it is that it shows it has different topics that it teaches the kids through reading comprehension. For example, inference, vocabulary, story parts, main idea, theme, cause and effect, prediction, and mixed skills. So 
with this, they will have a inference practice activity. My daughter already started this. She was too, too excited not to wait. Um, and so she is able to kind of highlight information that's important to her, things that she's going to be able to use to answer the question. I think this is great because it helps them also with getting information and pulling out what is important. That is one of the skills in college and in, in you know, any kind of time in life where you're going to have to be able to sift through large amounts of information and be able to derive the important facts. And so I believe this is going to really help her with that. I really love this and I will also link it in the description box. Now, language arts, as you guys know, I kind of do my own thing. I customize language arts curriculum. So I don't use any of those like all in one curriculum for language arts. There are just certain curriculum that I like. They're tried and true for me. And I like to use it, uh, you know, so that she can not only have a full comprehensive language arts program, but so that I can be able to spread it out throughout her week. So she's not like having this huge lesson in one day. So what do I use for language arts? So for phonics, we go with Plaid Phonics. We used Plaid Phonics last year. This is, I believe, the last level of Plaid Phonics that they make. So it's just, you know, she's nothing really fancy. She just does a couple of pages a day, still teaching those phonics rules. I am really, really big on spelling and phonics and writing. And so I believe that Kids, even in fifth grade, should still continue to learn phonics because those phonics skills are the foundation of spelling and writing and all those kinds of things. And so we use Plaid Phonics. It's been around forever. And really, you know, the, the lessons are not that long. They're not that cumbersome. And she's able to do it quickly and on her own. There's not really much I have to actually teach for that. Also for language arts, for vocabulary, we're going to go back to what we have done always, which is 240 vocab words kids need to know, fifth grade. And what I love about this curriculum is it's just a workbook. It's divided into about 20 lessons, so she really gets done with it by early February. And it has... The lesson gives you about 10 words and just different little activities that they do to practice their learning of the definitions of those words. And I really like it because, again, short, easy lessons. I don't have to teach it to her. So what she's going to be doing is she's going to be learning the vocab words for the week for that specific lesson. And then what I do is I just give her a little quiz on Friday just to make sure that she was able to remember the words. And what I like about this curriculum is it groups the words into different topics. So as you can see in the table of contents, you have synonyms, homophones. So they're also learning language arts skills as far as grammar, but doing it in a vocabulary. Latin roots, you know, different words that have to do with Latin roots. Now, once she is done with this curriculum, we are going to be going back to red hot root words. Now, red hot root words is one of my favorite things because it really helps the kids to understand the where words come from, where does their original meaning derive from. And I think that's really important because it really helps with other skills like spelling, like reading. You know, when they're able to see a hard word that maybe has a suffix or a prefix that they're able to kind of determine what that Latin root was, they're able to decipher what that word is actually saying or what it means. And so this is a great little book that I like to use. It's grades three through five. I kind of like it more towards the fourth and fifth grade. I think grade three is a little still too young to really master this, but it's still written for grades three to five. So that's what we use for our vocabulary. First spelling, we go with what I've always liked for her, spelling you see. My daughter really loves spelling you see. She loves learning new facts and new things about different things, about ancient civilizations, about modern marvels. Though this one's modern milestones, which, you know, talks about of a lot of inventors and things like that. So, I really love Spelling UC. I think it's a great program. Not really suitable for every child. My other daughter, who's in second grade, doesn't really like Spelling UC. But it really depends on your student and whether they like the, you know, there's a lot of copy work. There's a lot of dictation in it. So that's something you have to consider if you're going to choose this curriculum, if they are the type of student that would thrive doing learning spelling this way. Okay, the next thing that I do 
for language arts is writing. And writing, we are going to go back with IEW Structure and Style Year 2 Level A. Now, this, I cannot even rave enough about this curriculum. It is Phenomenal. And this is coming from a lawyer who knows about writing, knows about legal writing. And I, I, I could consider myself a really, really good writer. And I tell you the skills that you learn or that the child learns in this specific curriculum, they will take with them for a long time to come because it really teaches the foundations of structuring sentences and how to transition from one paragraph to another, how to have an idea of what to say and put it down on paper in a logical, sequential way. And so I love this program. It's again, what I love also is it's very independent. She goes on, she listens to Andrew Pudua do his lesson every day. He gives the assignments and all I have to do is check it at the end of the week. So for me, this is amazing. I can outsource writing. I know that Andrew Pudua is doing a phenomenal job and I love this program. So definitely highly, highly recommend it. We did year one level A last time and this year we're on to year two. So we just can't wait to use that as well. So for grammar this year, we're going to kind of go with something new. We're going to be using fix it grammar. Now this is also from IEW, the same program that does the writing curriculum that I just showed you. But I have heard phenomenal things about Fix-It Grammar. I have heard just, just everybody raves about it. And I'm like, okay, I just need to try this because I, I just, everyone says it's great. So it's also just got updated to like a new, um, curriculum, which is cool. So she's going to be doing Fix-It Grammar. This is all learning grammar rules through fixing different paragraphs, different passages. So you're actually marking and fixing errors and learning the grammar skills to do that. Now, I also use Scholastic Grammar. This is just a little workbook that kind of goes over the grammar rules and gives you some practice. But Fix-It Grammar really is kind of a revolutionary way to learn grammar skills. In fact, it's more of a real world way because you're actually going to be doing this in real life, right? If you're going to be an editor or if you're going to, you know, send an email to someone, you want to be able to look through and make sure you don't have grammatical errors, right? So I also got with the Fix-It Grammar, I got the Fix-It Grammar cards. These are really cool. They sell them on Christian Book. I think they sell them also, well, I'm sure they sell them on the IEW website as well. But this is a great resource for them to be able to use along with the curriculum because it kind of reminds them what the different grammar rules are and gives them examples. So she can use this as a reference guide so when she is doing the Fix-It Grammar curriculum. So this is also just a wonderful way for her to be able to use a new system to learn grammar rules. So I really love this program. I, I you know, I've heard amazing things about it. I don't know yet. I'm going to hopefully love it. We'll see. Leave it in the comments below how you feel about Fix-It Grammar. Uh All right. So the next thing I'm going to be showing you is math. We, of course, we are a Saxon family. I am a tried and true Saxon gal. I love Saxon math. It is, like I say, straight up math. My second grader also uses it. This is a great curriculum. It is very, very, very comprehensive. It mass you master it. You're, you're constantly reviewing and reviewing and reviewing these concepts that you are learning throughout the year. And I just can't tell you enough. We are going to be using Saxon Math uh, Intermediate 5. Now, there's a different type of curriculum that I think is more geared towards there. They have less real world problem solving in the book. I think that's the five, six version, but I kind of like this version. We used the same version last year. We used intermediate four and we really liked it because it gave a lot of real world problems. Like, you know, it had different experiments and ways to apply math concepts to the real world, which I think is really important. So we're going to go with Saxon math. Now I'm not going to be teaching this curriculum. We have a wonderful resource named Nicole the Math Lady. You, I will link her on the description box below as well. And she is this phenomenal woman who came down from heaven and is actually helping me with my math. Believe me, I need help learning math, so learning how to teach math. But this lady basically takes it. You, you, it's a membership that you buy for the year. 
and it includes all of her lessons. She takes all of the Saxon books. Uh, I think it's starting in grade three and up. She takes the books and she actually breaks down the lessons into short four to seven minute videos. I don't even think it's ever been longer than like seven minutes. And she teaches the math concept for the day. Then she has a separate video where she also goes over some practice problems that have to do with the lesson that you learned that day. Love, love the independence of that. And so if you want to see a video further on Nicole the Math Lady, I am more than welcome to be able to do that for you. Just please leave it in the comments below and let me know. But Saxon Math, that's our go-to for math. Now, with regard to her history, so we as a family do family subjects and world history is one of those subjects, but I really like to focus on the social studies and the American history individually with each child. That's the only subject that I break up, especially me because I have a second grader and a fifth grader and that's kind of hard to really help them understand the things that go on in history at those different levels like curriculums like story of the world which i use for our world history are do a great phenomenal job but i find it's hard to get a curriculum that really fits so i could teach the entire family so i'm plus i like to deep dive into history i am a history buff i'm a political science major i know a lot about civics and government being a lawyer so that's my kind of passion so with what we're going to be doing is last year, my daughter did social studies, she did Florida social studies. So she learned all about the state of Florida because that's where we live. So this year I wanted to focus on American history and I found this is an old curriculum. So this is something you're probably going to find on Amazon and it's from McGraw Hill. And I love it because it is a very patriotic curriculum. Very, very colorful. I love how it's very comprehensive. It talks about all of the important things in U.S. history. The pictures are phenomenal. It breaks it down. You have different like reviews you can do. You can do some activities that have to do with the lesson. So it has a lot of ideas of how you can kind of bring the learning alive in the curriculum itself. And it has great vocabulary words. So I'm a big McGraw-Hill fan. Now, I got to tell you, this is an older curriculum. I believe it was copyright like 2001. Uh, so it does have, it doesn't have like the latest and greatest stuff. But to be quite honest with you, it's really hard to find a good patriotic curriculum these days. And so I kind of like to just go back to the old stuff because, you know, like everybody knows, or like a lot of us know, the world's gone a little crazy with regards to what they're putting in history these days. So this is a great curriculum. I love it. It teaches her the basics. I feel like anything current past 2001, I can teach her myself. We can do a lot of current event studies and things like that. But this is what we are going to be doing for history. Now, the only other elective that I'm going to be doing with her is something that I really feel is important, especially because we kind of live in a world where kids are not learning life skills. So we are going to be having this year what's called Finance Fridays. So on Fridays, we're going to be learning about money. We're gonna be learning the different things about the biz about businesses, about the economy. We're gonna learn how to budget. I found this great curriculum. It's from the Thinking Tree. It's actually a homeschool curriculum where it's, it's not very comprehensive. You kind of have to do a little bit of preparing, which I don't mind because this is something that I think is really important for my kids to learn. Um, but what it does is it talks about the concepts of money. So it starts with part one, understanding money. Then it goes into understanding the way people make money, government and taxes, understanding basic economy. It talks about hard times, you know, the Great Depression, all of the things that affected our economy. We're also going to talk about COVID since that was very recent and kind of apply that. But they're just short lessons. We're just going to do them on Fridays. We're going to learn how to budget. We're going to learn how to balance a checkbook. I'm actually going to try to use a service that it's, it's like a little card, like a debit card that you give your child and she's able to track her expenses through that. You know, we can set aside money for saving. We can set aside money for charity, things like that. So this is going to be great. I'm really excited. I can do a further flip through if you guys want to see that. But in the interest of time, I just wanted to give you a little overview on that. Okay. So the last thing that I wanted to show you that I'm going to be doing this year 
is religion and for a religion as you guys know we are a catholic family and we love to teach catechesis to our children we want them to learn about the faith and so this is a tried and true curriculum it's from the faith and life series it's from i believe ignatius press sells this curriculum uh, you might be able to find it on other websites but this is what we are using for religion it is a great comprehensive fifth grade focused curriculum and this is actually uh, called credo i believe which means it focuses on the nicene creed and everything that the catholic church believes and it breaks it down into different lessons for them to really do a deep dive in it and so this is what we going to we are going to be using for our religion all right, everybody, that's it. That's fifth grade. I hope that this video has been really helpful for you to come up with some ideas for fifth grade curriculum. That's what we're going to be using. I always like to kind of check in either mid-year or towards the end of the year to let you know what we liked, what we didn't like, what worked, what didn't work. But as you can see, we used some stuff that we've used before. We're trying out some new curriculum and uh, we are excited for what's going to happen this year. So definitely, if you love these videos, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, join the Firewife Lawyer family. The next video that's coming up, I'm going to be doing will be our family subjects. And then I'm gonna be sharing with you my morning basket, which is not even a morning basket anymore. It's become a morning cart. So you're gonna have to stay tuned to see why it's become a morning cart. Thank you so much for being with me today and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Grow old, please tell me you'll stay or take me away.